So this video will demonstrate how to use the Excel solver to solve a model that has already been formulated. So we have this head cover problem that we illustrated by showing how we can locate the coffee shops at RPI campus with a slight difference of the objective coefficients. In this model, we have objective coefficients different than one. So this is a weighted set cover problem. So each building will cost us a different amount because of certain reasons. Some buildings might have more space. So opening coffee shop might cost more or things like that, different reasons. So we have a different cost for each building and then it means we have a cost array. So what are we, what we are going to do is we are going to tell Excel that we have these constraints and our objective function is this, and we have a binary decision variable to do that. I'm going to start with my constraints. So my constraints say that I multiply some values with my decision variable. So I store my decision variables in these cells. So this cell corresponds to X1, this one corresponds to X2, this one corresponds to X3 and so on. So I have 13 of them. What this says is I have one for X1, X2, X3. So if I write one for X1, two X, one for X2 and one for X3 and zero for the others, then it means x1 times 1, x2 times 1, x3 times 1 is my left hand side because the rest is 0. And same for the second constraint. x1 has a coefficient of 1, so here is 1. x2 has a coefficient of 1, here is 1. x3 has a coefficient of 1, here is 1. x4 is 1 and the rest is 0. To avoid writing it one by one, I can hold the right bottom right and drag it towards right and then it will show me all zeros for the rest of the cells. For the third constraint I have 1 for 1 to 4. So 1 to 4 is 4, the rest is 0. For the fourth constraint I have 0 for x1. So this time x1 is 0. 2, 3, 4, they are all 1s and the rest is 0. I have the rest listed here. I am going to cut and paste 5 to 13 to save time. And now what I have here is the Excel is going to understand my constraints by using these values. So I basically wrote one whenever I saw a coefficient of one in my constraints for the corresponding constraint in this table. Now I am going to multiply each cell by my decision variable to have this form right on the right hand side. So to do that, I'm going to put a dollar sign in between B and three because my decision variables are not going to move. I will always multiply my rows by this set of cells. So this is zero right now. So I'm going to hold the bottom right, drag it towards right, and then I have all of my values. So this means this value times this. So x1 times 1, x2 plus 1, x3 plus 1, and so on. If I select all of these, hold the bottom right and drag it down, then I have all of my coefficients. So all of these values right here represent the left hand side of my constraint. So what happened here by putting a dollar sign between B and three, what I had is even though I dragged it down, I moved down to um, B6 cell. So for the first constraint, if you look at the first, it is B5 times B dollar three. The second one, B6 times B dollar three. This is what I wanted. I wanted to move down for my constraint to get the second constraint represented. But for my decision variable, I'm still multiplying by the same decision variable. If I go to X2, it is C6 times C3. 
my C3 is my decision variable X2 and C6 is my coefficient for that corresponding constraint. By following the same idea, we can verify all of these are correct. Now, I am going to sum all of these up, which is going to represent the left hand side of my constraint. So LHS is left hand side of my constraint. So what I have here is say we have an optimal solution of x1, x2, x3, r1 and the rest is zero. So XL is going to plug that value into my constraint and it's going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3 and my left hand side is going to be 3 because this row represents x1 plus x2 plus x3. Similar idea for this and the other rows. So this is how I tell Excel my left hand side is constructed in this column. And I also proactively listed my right hand side values. Since all of them are ones, I have listed ones here. We could have had different values, but in this case, all of them are one. So right hand side is listed here. Now I am going to tell Excel where my objective function is. My objective function is some product of my objective coefficients. So I selected the cells corresponding to my objective function and comma my decision variables. So what this some product function does is x1 plus 4, x, sorry, x1 times 4 plus x2 times 5 plus x3 times 2 and so on. So some product does it and Excel is going to know that my objective function is the multiplication of these cost values and my decision variables. So now I'm going to data solver and now I'm ready to tell Excel about my model. So set objective, Excel asks where my objective function is located. So here is my objective function value. So that is objective and I want to minimize because the objective is to minimize and by changing variable cells. But it means it's at, at Excel asks where my decision variables are located. And like I said at the beginning, they are right here. I selected them and Excel now knows B3 to N3 are my decision variables. And now I'm going to write my constraints. To say that my constraints are this, I already constructed my left hand side. So I am going to select these 13 cells, O21 to O33, and my right hand side is listed here, P21 to P33, and my constraint is a greater than or equal to type. If I had a less than or equal to, I was going to choose this. If it is an equal to kind of constraint, choose this. But we have a greater than or equal to constraint, and now we can choose this. Edit. And the next constraint I have is the de binary decision variables. To say that my decision variables are binary, I am going to choose my decision variable cells. And now I said, okay, cell reference is B3 to N3 because I stored my decision variables in those cells. And I am telling my Excel now that my decision variables are binary. So BIN represents binary. If I had integer decision variables, say my decision variables could get one, two, three, four, and so on, then I was going to choose INT, integer. If I had a continuous decision variable, I was going to choose greater than or equal to, and I was going to say zero, because that can be greater than or equal to zero, and it can take any values because it's continuous. But in this case, it is binary, so I'm going to select binary, and then say okay. Then, select the solving method. My method is going to be simplex LP because my model is linear, and now I am ready to go. I am going to say solve, and solver found the solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Say OK. And now we see that this is our solution. So open a coffee shop in 3, 5, 9, and 11. 
So what this means is my objective value is 8 because 1 times 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 times 2 equals 8. So my op optimal solution is here and my objective value is 8. Because I told Excel my objective value is going to appear here and these are the cells that my object, my optimal decision va variable values will appear at the end. If I go to go down to my constraints, like I said at the very beginning, these are going to represent my left hand side values. So now let's check if this is correct. So first constraint says x1 plus x2 plus x3. So the summation of first three. So sum of 0, 0, 1 is 1. My left hand side is 1. 1 to 4 for second constraint summation of these is one. So I have a one here. For this one, constraint seven, which is five, six, seven, Carnegie, five, seven, eight, nine. So I have five plus nine equals two. That's why I have a two here. So what this does is left-hand side of these, these constraints, and these are left-hand sides when I plug in my optimal values to the constraint. So you can see that it satisfies my constraint because all of them are greater than or equal to one. And we satisfied our constraints. We found the minimum number of coffee shops to be opened, minimum cost locations, the locations to open the coffee shops that will cost us the least. So eight is our objective value and these are the solutions. And this is how we use the Excel solver. This technique could be applicable to all models. You might have different constraints, different decision variables, maximization objective, and so on. But the technique you're going to use is the same. If you follow this technique, you're going to be able to solve any models on Excel Solver.